Hey guys, um, so for this video I am going to be doing a movie review of uh, Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Uh, first off, I was, um, for a moment I was uncertain about watching this movie, um, same with the one before, Bumblebee, um, until I realized or remembered that um, Michael Bay isn't going to be involved. So that means no you know, Sam Witwicky, that annoying ass motherfucker. Um, thankfully we didn't have to see that dickhead anymore. Um, I mean, no more sexualization of the female characters. Um, because literally, I only remember three. There was Megan Fox, and she doesn't have any storyline whatsoever, other than to be, you know, the, you know, award, reward for, uh, Sam. You know, he does nothing at all. But I guess, what, try to help the Transformer destroying the world, and I guess the least you possibly could do, you know, if you're a decent person. But, of course, he's rewarded with her. Then, of course, and the later on, oh god, with the later ones, like the last few, there was um, the daughter of Mark Wahlberg's. Uh, character who once again I remember jack shit about her because she's just there to you know it, it's pretty much feels like she's a, a a toy for the two you know her father and her her boyfriend um to to like play tug of war with you know it felt like she's it, I, she just didn't feel like she was relevant at all in the story um, and I actually, uh, forgot about this character because it was literally barely in the screen time, but it was the, um, the, uh, woman who ends up being a robot. Um, so yeah, <laughs> they even sexualized the robots in this movie, um, made her look like a hot girl so that he can, you know, Sam would be interested in her. Um, and then turns out he's a robot, so I f completely forgot about her until I was like trying to rack my brains. Michael Bay's Transformers is what people say Zack Snyder is. Um, they claim he's st style over substance, but that's not true. This is, that's actually Michael Bay in Transformer movies. All style, you know, flashy cars and, you know, shiny robots, and that's it. Um, annoying as fuck characters as well, but uh, you know, no substance whatsoever to the stories, um, to any of the characters. Um, so yeah, <laughs> thankfully, um, just from what I've seen so far, we're no longer beginning to get in that crap. No more racist shit. So one of the things I was interested in when I saw the trailer was the, of course, the animal transformers, and I might call them that throughout the video just because I don't want to have to rack my brains to remember what the actual term for them are um, because they have so many different names um, it can get confusing but um yeah so that was one of the um, things that interest me um, especially after the last I think it was the last one the last transformer the last night I, I think that was what the last one was called you know, when they had the dinosaurs that we only showed up at the end and we didn't get anything with with just what one pretty mediocre fight scene and that was it. That pissed me off so much. I actually did enjoy this, you know, the ones in this, this movie because they were actually kind of unique and, um, you know, uh, I think I, I thought the designs were cool as well. I'll get a little bit more into that later when I talk about the characters and specifically, but yeah, um, I guess we'll just start with the synopsis for the movie, so if you haven't watched it, then if you don't want to watch it, okay. If you don't want to be spoiled for it, then I guess don't watch this review. <laughs> but I'm going to have to assume you've actually seen it if you're watching a review of the movie, so. So the opening scene is with the um, Maximals. Um, and they're trying to keep the Transwarps key away from the Terracons. 
Um, so the transwarp key opens portals between universes and they're trying to, the bad guys, the Terracons are trying to get it so that they, that uh, Unicron can transport to their world and to other worlds as well. So they're trying to keep it away from, uh, from uh, you know, the Terracons and Unicron. Um, there were two gorilla transformers and one you know the leader stays behind to delay the you know his name is scourge he's the main bad guy um try to delay scourge long enough so that the others can escape and uh they end up escaping to uh earth and that's pretty much uh, the first scene and then we get into the human aspect of it um so there's this woman her name is elena She's an intern at a museum, and she um, is like normally with interns. She's the one doing most of the work, and of course the boss takes credit for it. So um, it's very much established that she's very smart, and she's very passionate about what she's doing, and she's, she's very knowledgeable in this, her field. So it feels completely um, possible, I guess likely that she would run across a sculpture um it's a sculpture of a falcon um but she you know the time period that's supposed to come from you know she's never seen anything and it was like the you know the the animal transformer had that little uh symbol like the the maximal symbol i guess you could call it like the autobots have they had the like um logo i guess um, but on the, on the sculpture, it has the little, like, Maximal logo. And she's never seen it before, and she becomes really interested in it. And so, um, she's doing research on it, and, um, she, um, eventually how she ends up in the place that she does, because she ends up going into the museum to, um, I guess you could say test it and <laughs> end up inadvertently um, opening it and uh, or opening it, but it's like broke apart to reveal the time, the the trans warp. There you go. Okay, now flash back. Um, we're introduced to another character. His name is Noah. He's uh, he's the big brother of um, you know he has a little brother and his mom and he's kind of support for them he's trying to help his brother because I don't know if it's he has some kind of disease I'm not sure if it's deadly or not or just painful but um you know they don't have money to pay for it um obviously don't have health care either um and so he's struggling to find a way to help his brother and so that's how he ultimately ends up working with um he has a acquaintance I guess he Sometimes we'll repair electronic for him so that his friend can sell it, but um, his friend has been pushing him to do something more shady um, for, for more money. And so he ends up, that's how he ends up at the museum because the museum has a Porsche that they're wanting to steal. And, or not the museum. No, no, no. It wasn't the museum. He he doesn't end up there till later. But some kind of building. I don't know what it was, but it has a Porsche in the basement, and so they end up stealing it. Um, and of course, that's just in time for the trans warp to. Um, it opens up, and then it gives off a beacon. And only the the Autobots and the Decepticons and all of them, only they can see it, humans can't. So um, more, or Optimus Prime sees it, calls all the Autobots, and that includes Mirage. Um, so Mirage takes him to the, the meetup. And, uh, you know, um, Optimus Prime isn't the biggest fan of humans, and he doesn't want anything to do with uh, Noah, but they decide that uh, they need a, an end to get the trans warp key, um, and so they decide to use Noah, and Noah agrees to do it because Mirage promises to um, pretty much 
turn back into the Porsche and then allow him to sell him off to somebody um, and then he'll eventually escape himself. So that's how he, they both, Elena and Noah, end up at the um, museum and of course Scourge and the other Terracons show up because they've been called by the beacon or they see the beacon. And there's that big fight at the museum and then Air Razor, um, one of the Maximals, um, shows up to, well, drive off Scourge, but he pretty much left because he thought he had the key. Turns out that uh, it's only part of the key. They've split them in two and put them in two sp separate spots. And uh, turns out Elena knows where the second part is, which, once again, it's established at the beginning that she is very much passionate about you know, archaeology and, you know, artifacts and stuff like that. And she did, it did show her doing research. And so she, she, um, reveals that, um, there's one other place that this specific symbol, um, the maximal symbol has been found or whatever has been found and it was in Peru. And so they end up going to Peru. Oh, forgot to tell you that, uh, uh, Bumblebee ends up get, getting put out of commission, I guess you could say. Not exactly dead because he can be revived with this kind of substance, this metal, I, I don't know what to call it, but he's out of commission for the moment. Um, but then they end up, they bring in um, another Autobot that he, he, can trans he transforms into this like really old rickety um, cargo plane and so they um, you know use him to dr uh, fly to Peru and uh, there they meet up with another one I forgot what his name is but he um, he's voiced by you know he has a Mexican like a he has a Mexican accent which was <laughs> I mean they address it and because Noah's Hispanic and when, he, when the, the Autobots start talking, he uh, immediately got excited because he heard, he heard the, the accent. And uh, uh, the Autobot calls him racist for assuming that just because he has the accent that he can speak Spanish. And, you know. Um, but I kind of liked the character because he was more of like a scientist. You know, he was talking about how he was like studying butterflies and all this and I kind of like that aspect they're not you know we get this they're all like unique characters all the you know Autobots so um, I kind of like that so yeah um they get to Peru um they go to the city and they go um they figure out a puzzle that opens up like a, a cavern which was kind of giving me like um, cause it, it's like this giant hole, but it had like the little like stones coming out that were stairs, but no handholds. And it was just, I was kind of like really getting, uh, I guess you could say, what is it? Uh, vertigo or what is it? Fear of heights. Um, it was just kind of creeping me out. <laughs> um, but yeah, they eventually safely get to the bottom and it's revealed to be like this hidden city. They do find the coffins or coffinicus, whatever that would hold the artifact. Turns out it's gone, but it has some other symbols, and so she she writes them down, and uh, they end up. Well, the Autobots or Terracons ends up uh, coming and attacking, and they eventually escape through some tunnels into the forest, and. Um, yeah, that's where they ultimately meet um, Optimus Primal. <laughs> so obvious a play on Primate. Um, but uh, yeah, they eventually meet him, and uh, you know he reveals that they had moved the transwarp key to protect it, um, and so they end up going um, to where he has hidden it, and it turns out to be a tribe of humans that were just keeping it safe for him. So I guess put it in the most obvious place or put it in plain sight, they wouldn't think that the Autobot or, you know, the, you know, Maximals would give it to the humans, I guess. So, but yeah, um, I kind of like the aspect as well. 
you know, the Maximo had this like close relationship with like primal humans, right? And they still have a, a close connection with them um, now because I feel like it was kind of a, a kind of a nature um, human to nature thing, close relationship between the two. It's, I kind of like the aspect because I felt like when it comes to the Autobots, they're very much feel like robots, I guess you could say. Um, the Maximals feel more organic in that they feel like, you know, they're part organism. Um, so, um, for example, they have, there are four of them, um, and, uh, um, at least for the the mammals, the the there's a rhino, there's a cheetah, and then there's the gorilla, and they do have like hair, which I think is probably real real hair. So it felt like they're kind of like part organic, part robot, um, which I kind of liked. Um, but yeah, it felt I I kind of liked the aspect of the movie uh, uh, during the fight um, before. Air Razor had gotten um, hit by something uh, from Scourge and it ends up corrupting her and so which I kind of had to roll my eyes at because of course it felt like because she didn't tell them that she had been hit and that she was being corrupted because she literally called that you know she's saying that she can fail him in her mind so she doesn't tell anyone until she attacks and helps him get Scourge get the transwarp key and then of course Optim Op Optimus Primal ends up having to kill her which I don't it was kind of sad <laughs> because I, I did like her but yeah so he of course he ends up getting it and they end up going to the volcano so that they can open a portal and so um yeah they end up going to the the mountain or the volcano um apparently there's a fail safe with the uh, trans warp key but you have to get to the panel that you know is well it's not open um they can't get there because of um scourge and his minions but there's a tunnel underneath it so that they can tunnel um underneath it to come up around to get to the panel and of course Elena she's able to figure out um the code um which once again it's very believable because she's very familiar with all of this you know so um but yeah um we get the big showdown like the big battle scene where they're doing the charge and everything and this is when you finally get to see the Maximals kind of transform into their other sedate. I don't know what you call it because they don't really look much like robots or at least not like the Autobots. You know, um, it felt like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain without actually seeing it, but they, they're kind of like bulkier and, you know, they're not as, they, they look more like uh, organisms, I guess. They look like, um, unlike the, the, the Autobots who actually look like metal. They look like machines, you know. The Maximals look very much more like humanoid um, than the Autobots do. Um, but I, I really did like the, the design for them. It was really cool. And of course, they... Um, you know, each of their kind of the character, um, the the their alter state, um, their alter form, is similar to the the animals that they transform into. So like cheetah, che cheetor, cheetor. I think that's what he's called. He's really fast. He's really flexible in his other state. Um, so um, I kind of like how they keep that aspect. So yeah, um, the big battle scene, um, Bumblebee shows up again because um, when the portal opened or the trans warp key activated, it sent out a, like a shock wave that ends up activating this metal that he was laying on. So he's, you know, up and, and, and uh, running again. So, and then we get him, he gets the big like scene where he's 
um, shows up in the the uh, cargo plane and he jumps out of it and you see it in a trailer um, but yeah and he ends up killing the um, what was her name um, it's Nightbird her name's Nightbird and she's actually a ninja which I thought was really cool because she has this really neat looking sword but yeah he ends up killing her <laughs> um, and so yeah. Um, um, yeah so ultimately Scourge ends up I don't, not necessarily killing Mirage um, uh, he kind of puts him out of commission once again. Um, he's still alive, but he can't really move. And so he, I don't know how to explain it. He gives Noah parts of himself so that he can make an, you know, a suit for Noah. So Noah has his own suit made of, uh, Mirage's parts. Um, and he was talking and he said that, you know, I'm still alive, but I, you're going to have to take the will. So I'm assuming he's still like consciously in the suit, you know, Noah's just controlling it. So it's kind of weird, but you know, and then we get Noah, you know, kicking butt and which is once again, um, it's believable because his character, um, was originally, he was a soldier. Um, he ends up getting, I wouldn't say dishonorably, dishonorably, is that what you call it? Um, discharged, but he ends up, I won't say getting kicked out of the military because he just wasn't there present. He was so more worried about his, um, brother and so, um, but he, he would have the skills to, you know, fight. So he uses all the you know, robot special powers of the robots to fight a uh, scourge so yeah it ends up i mean they end up defeating them of course of course elena um she tries to she right as she gets a code um it ends up getting destroyed of course <laughs> and so they have to do the hard way and uh just destroy the transport key themselves and so long story short um optimus prime kills scourge destroys the um transwarp key of course it start creates like a um what would you call that uh, you know it uh, it sucks everything um that came out of it i guess back into it um and so uh aptus prime he was going to sacrifice himself and he's you know, trying to escape the vortex i guess it's what you call it um, of the transwarp key being destroyed and you think he's going to die but then Noah shows up and grabs onto him and then eventually Optima, um, Optimus Primal shows up and grabs onto them and they're both they're all able to escape and that felt very much like it's some alpha thing you know um, so we get Optimus Prime, Optimus Primal and then of course Noah who's kind of like the leader of the humans I guess you'd say so it felt very much like oh we're gonna you know there were the leaders who have to work together to you know defeat the bad guy so that's kind of what it felt like but yeah so they end up winning the day um everyone survives um except Air Razor and Mirage I'm not sure what happens after that with him um but uh, the ending scene, um, we get Noah. He's uh, in a job interview and he's talking to the the guy interviewing him and he said he was in South America and then the job interviewer brings up Peru and Noah says that he didn't bring up Peru so he's kind of suspicious and you know the, the interviewer is acting shady so the interviewer reveals that he's part of this organization that fights threats against the United States or the, the world. Um, and he goes to the wall and there's like this, um, I guess a ward and you just like turn it and then turn it back and it opens up into a secret layer, which I kind of thought funny. That's, that's very like, you're, you're trusting that no one would come and, you know, accidentally like open up the door. <laughs> um, and so, but, um, you know, he tries to recruit Noah, he gives him a card and 
No, it flips over. Lo and behold, it's G.I. Joe. So obviously they're possibly doing a crossover with G.I. Joe, which I'm both interested in and not so much interested because, you know, I'd be interested to see how they would do that. Um, it just makes me want to go watch the movie again because I haven't seen the movie in forever and I enjoyed it growing up. Um, not so interested because I'm kind of wary because of uh, how much studios have run this idea of crossovers into the ground. I'm also very wary of it, so we'll see. So that's pretty much the movie. Um, all the uh, as for like my thoughts on the characters and just generally the plot. Um, so I pretty much give, gave a lot of my thoughts on Noah and Elena, the two main human characters. So uh, we'll just move on to some of the Autobots. So one of the Autobots I haven't mentioned yet, her name's RC, and she's um, smaller than the others. She's able to transform into a motorcycle. But the weird thing is that it actually looks like there's someone riding the motorcycle, so I'm not sure if that's just a hologram or if you know that's just the upper part of her body because she does you know her she does look like the most human out of all of them um and so i'm not sure if that was just her upper body part and the rest transforms into the march cycle but i liked her character she's nice enough there's mirage of course which in the movie i enjoyed him i thought he was funny um but not annoying um, but once I learned that it was, he was actually voiced by Pete Davidson, that really kind of killed it for me, to be honest. So I can't think of him the same way again, unfortunately. Um, Optimus Prime, they try to, um, I mean, well, they, they do an arc with him in this movie. Um, he's very much wary of humans. Um, he believes that there, there's nothing good about them, um, which... He has lived with them for a little bit, so I mean, I guess that's more believable than Optimus Prime and Bay's version coming to Earth and automatically loving humans and, you know, continually talking about how humans are so great, you know, without any, like, criticisms, I guess. Um, I like how then this version, at least, He's very much wary because, yeah, humans suck. <laughs> um, and he he's more, he's concerned with getting the transwarp key. And he wants to give it to um, Scourge so that he will open up a portal so that he can get to his world. That's kind of the only way he can get to his world. Um, but he has to kind of go through this art deciding whether or not he wants to doom another world to this fate or possibly not going home again you know so um i like that that they tried to do something with his character um and of course by the end he decides that he's going to um you know save earth and uh i guess protect humans um sometimes i did not know until i looked it up his unmasked face um when he's not wearing like the, the shield um, was designed after the actor's face so you can actually see they look really similar the face looks similar to the actor's face and that was on purpose which I thought was cool um, then the stratosphere he's the, the, the Autobot that can turn into the cargo plane apparently the actor also voiced another um, character he was a Decepticon his name was Transit who transformed into a New York City transit bus, but the scenes were cut from the movie because they were considered too dark. Which, I'm fucking pissed that they didn't include in the movie. I want to see the scenes that they thought were too dark. Considering how it was a New York transit bus he transformed into, I'm going to assume it probably imbued, involved humans dying. Um, so, But I really thought that was interesting. And then there's Well Jack, he's the the one, um, the scientist, Autobot. Um, he transforms into a Volkswagen panel bus. Um, so we really get a good mixture of different vehicles that these characters trans transform into, which I really liked. 
And then there's the Terracons, there's Scourge, of course. And he's more of like a, he's more like a pawn to, um, fuck, I forgot his name. Unicron, there we go. Um, the big bad, you know, planet-eating robot. Um, you know, I, I mean, one interesting thing that he does is whenever he kills a Autobot or just a character, um, Autobot or Maximal, he will pull off of the logos and then weld it onto his arm so his arm is like covered in like, you know, all the logos of the people he's destroyed, which I thought was unique and kind of made him a little bit creepier. But something I did not know, he is voiced by Peter Dinklage, which I can understand. I mean, you know, Peter Dinklage does have a, a deeper voice. Um, I'm not sure, I'm assuming they altered these voice to make him sound more robotic. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of want to rewatch it again just to see if I can really tell if it's, you know, if I could tell it's Peter Dinklage. So. So yeah, that's something interesting. There's Battle Trap. He uh, transformed into a tow truck. And the actor, the voice actor for the character, David uh, Sobolov, um, he says that voicing this character is the most ruthless character he's ever done. So um, that was interesting. I think he also voices, he's a voice actor from the animated series. Um, maybe one of them is, uh, um, um, so Nightbird, um, she's female character and she, um, transforms into a Nissan Skyline GTR R33. Um, she, she's the one who can turn into a ninja, so it was really cool and she was like really slick and, and. She had purple in her design, which I thought was really cool. So she has this like purplish design. And she's voiced by Michaela Jo J? Michaela J. Rodriguez. And uh she happens to be the first voice or first transgender voice actor um in this franchise. So I thought that was really cool. Um I did I did like the voice acting with her um so so the Maximals um there's Optimus Primal he's voiced by Ron uh Perlman if you didn't know that already um um I mean you know yeah I, I liked him well enough I liked his how he's um very close to the humans like I said before so I kind of like that and we're probably gonna see him later if we get another movie so um, I think it would be interesting to see more about him. Of course, Air Racer, which I did not know, but she was voiced by Michelle Yu. So yeah, <laughs> I did not know that at the time, but I liked her character as well. Um, then there's Titor and Rhinox, which we don't really get much screen time with them other than the fight scene. So possibly if you have another movie, you might get a little bit more about them, which I would like. And then, of course, the story. Um, just my thoughts on the story. Um, I liked, you know, how they developed a relationship. The Maximals developed a relationship with ancient humans. Because um, it made the, made the animals feel connected to Earth, I guess. Um, made them more relatable, I guess. Um, so that was pretty much my thoughts on the movie. A little bit behind the scenes, um, apparently this is supposed to be the first of three movies, um, co the, that's covering, I'm, I think it's Beast Wars, isn't that what it, they are called in the animated series, the Beast Wars, so I'm assuming that's what this is going to be. Um, John Cena apparently expressed interest in returning for the sequel because apparently he was in Bumblebee and I blocked that out. I just pray they don't bring him back. I'm tired of wrestlers being in these action movies. And uh, apparently the writer for this movie said the Optimus Prime arc, the arc that he went through in this movie, um, came prior to the 20, 2007 film um, and said in the, the events of the film would be preserved. Um, you know, the, the, I'm assuming the, the first 
um, Bay Transformer movies, the events from that movie are going to be preserved um, in the the arc that Ultimates Prime has came before the Transformer movies. So I think they're pretty much just following the original Transformer somewhat. Um, it's just they they rebooted it and tweaked it some. So um, I guess you're saying they're they're trying to keep to the spirit of the Bay films, I guess. Wait, I don't know, but I mean, I am interested in seeing the next movie. Um, so we'll see. Um, so yeah, so that's my thought on the Transformer uh, Rise of the Beasts movie. So if you did like this review, give it a like, um, subscribe to get notification for all the videos I'll be doing. Um, you guys have a nice night. Thanks about that. Okay.